And we are back. Talk about another creep, another psychopath, another uh, person that ain't got sense, another murderer. Yeah. So, yeah, we're here. Let's get into it. Basically, this dude been killing for a while. Was killing for a while. But people didn't know. He got caught for a certain crime. He targeted sex workers, basically, mostly. Um, the reason I, I'm gonna get into the reasons why he said he killed him, um, what he got out killing him, um, things of that nature. Dude's weird, but most of the people I do is weird. Um, so let's get into it. Let's start it. Yes. So most of this story is going to be in Chicago, Illinois. Um, it's going to branch off, you know, to surrounding areas for the most part. But the central part of the story will be in Chicago. So Darren Dion Van, he was born March 21st, 1971 in Indiana. He was married for 16 years to Maria Van, who was about 30 years older than him. So, <clears throat> this is what I think is a little weird about that. <clears throat> was he a sugar baby that married the, the the mama, you know, the sugar mama? Or what's going on with that? What's going on with that 30 years different? Did he marry, did he marry her so, you know, he could have a, more time to do him? And she ain't really got to worry about it because she, 30 years older, she... You know, or is he and the smithing? Like, what is he doing? Like, that's what that's what I want to know when it comes to this thirty year age difference. Um, I, I'm just saying. Her son did not like the man. Her son basically thought what I just said that he was on that scummy, you know, scheming, trying to do what he got to do, get that older lady, get that money, not have to do too much. But um, his son even uh, well stepson. So I guess it's, it's it's her son, his stepson, quote unquote, did an interview with CNN, saying that Van usually talked to himself, showing that he crazy, bro's crazy. The son even expressed that he did not allow Van near his kids or in his home. He also said that um, the two moved to Austin. And that van also, I mean, often spent time in rough areas of town. So he was always in the hood. He didn't like that. He was always in the hood, being extra, doing the most. That's all he had to say. He just didn't want to say it on CNN. But we all know what he was saying. Bro's in the hood, the projects. Probably had, you know, had to go get his black and miles. Maybe blunts if he small. I don't know. I don't know. It's preference. Maybe a little faulty. I don't know. I'm just saying. Who am I to judge? Well, I can judge his ass because he's weird. He's as we see, we talking about him. He's a serial killer. So I can judge him. I judge his weird ass. But as far as anybody else, who am I to judge? But this nigga, I mean, this man, no, this nigga, no, this yeah. I'm gonna judge his ass. For sure. He's for sure getting judged. Psycho. Upon losing his job through a temp agency, Van and his wife decided to move from Austin to Gary. While in Gary, he began seeing another woman. Damn, start creeping. How you start creeping on the old lady? I mean, damn, he's probably creeping the whole time. Shit. Well, who, who am I to talk? All right. Well, yeah. In April 2004, Van was found holding that woman, getting charged with a Class D felony and spending 90 days in jail. It's a picture, actually. Here's the picture of him holding this woman. Yeah. It's there you, there for all to see. We see it. Anybody who wants to see it can see it. Anybody who watches this video can see it. I'm I'm kind of tripping on the fact that he only spent 90 days in jail because I was reading somewhere and they were saying he had like a like a gasoline uh, can and shit like that on him when this was happening. So kind of confused how he got 90 days in that 
And we see the picture. He kind of holding. It. I mean, he don't got the gas tank, the gasoline can or nothing on him. I guess in the picture. So, I mean, I I, I guess that's how he got ninety. But still, how the hell you get only ninety days for that? I, I, I guess. Okay. Well, once he got released, he decided to pack up and head to Austin. It was in Austin that his behavior began to escalate. So the real psychopath in him came out for all to see. Van connected with women through an escort service and met up with her in an apartment. Where there, he raped, beat, and attempted to choke the woman. What? So what, what made you just snap? Like, bro, just snap. Like, his mind just... Phew. To where you would do something like that. So he gets indicted on the of the crime in July 2008, and he's sentenced to five years in prison. During this time, his 16 year marriage to his wife dissolved, and she divorced him. Of course, bro, you got caught, you raped, uh, and strangled, and did all this shit to a escort um, while you're married. Uh, pretty sure she's gonna divorce you, and you're gonna spend five years in jail. So, uh, sounds like divorce to me. He was released on July 5th, 2013. He registered as a sex offender and returned to Gary. Authorities in Austin deemed him to be a low risk and he was able to fly under the radar. Bro, clearly not, as we can see from the rest of this story. His wife, Maria Van, filed for divorce in 2009. Damn, man, I'm old, bro. I was still in high school in 2009. <laughs> like, sheesh. Man, I'm old. He was also in the Marine Corps, where he got a other than honorable discharge, which I did not know you could get. You know, um, I thought usually it was just an honorable discharge, and then that was about it. Uh, I didn't know you can get a a not so honorable. Like your other than honorable discharge from the United States Marine Corps. So he got that in 1993. He joined in 1991. So, uh, yeah, I didn't even know you can get that. That's pretty. Like, like, what did you do in the military that got you one of those? Like, bro, I had problems from the jump. How did nobody see this? How did he? How did he get put as a low risk? And he had all these issues, all these problems. He's probably a very smart person, though. Most psychopaths are. He's probably very manipulative, too. He's probably a narcissist. That's the only thing. Like, how else could he fly under the radar like that? <laughs> this ain't it, Chief! That's what I would have told you! We're going to get into one of his victims. Um, this is actually the victim that ended up basically getting him caught. So, I guess you could say she really didn't die in vain. It's kind of a sad story. All together. To me, all these stories are. But, um, Africa Hardy, you know, she's 19 years old. She was very beautiful, very full of spirit from... The pictures I saw, you know, she seemed like a really cool girl. She had uh, recently moved to Chicago. She had family there. Her mom, Lori Townsend, had stayed behind in Colorado. Um, they had lived there for five years. So Africa wanted to be famous. That was one of her big things. She told her mother often that that's something that she wanted to do. She wanted to be famous. Um. She eventually, I guess she she kind of got that from what happened. It's kind of sad. She ended up being famous for actually catching the murderer, you know? Um, because that's how he was caught. So, yeah. But the sad part about it, she was the last one he killed, but... He killed as many in a, like a 10 month span. He killed seven women. Seven. 
Let me repeat seven. And then it's a many as it could be as many as eighteen total women spanning different parts of the United States. As many as eighteen. So his side of choice was back page. Um I heard a back page because it was on the news one time. I knew people used to do shit like this on Craigslist. Like, I don't knock nobody hustle. Hey, do you make that money? So, I knew people used to do shit like that on Craigslist. I didn't know there was a site called Backpage until Backpage was getting taken down. But I think was it the feds or something that took Backpage down? Like, they came for Backpage. Uh, I think they're doing illegal stuff. So they got shut down. Of course, illegal prostitution. <laughs> Hello, guy. Hello, Casey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were doing prostitution, things like that. Um, escorts, like what we're going to be talking about in the story, as we see. So he actually found Africa on Backpage on October 17th, 2014. They met at a Motel 6 in Hammond, Indiana. Sometime during that night, the women who helped uh, to arrange Van and Hardy's meeting, um, because I don't, I don't know how that works. I guess her pimp, her madam, her something like that. Um, he kind of the person. I don't know if it's oh, it's a woman. So the woman got nervous. She felt suspicious. So her and the male friend went to the motel around nine thirty. Upon arrival, they found Africa strangled to death in the bathtub. Police used Africa's phone records and traced her last activity to Van. Van was found to have Africa's pink cell phone in his possession. So, this that's kind of weird to me. Uh, so, he probably kept mementos. Like, I don't know if you guys seen Dexter. Shout out to Dexter. That's coming. It's a, it's a new episode coming on tonight. After like a 10 year hiatus. Uh, they're going to do us right. It's that last season. The season finale. I mean the series finale up until this point. Was horrible. That whole season was horrible. So they about to do us right. Or Dexter when that came back. But yes. Dexter is back. Want to throw that little tidbit in there. Y'all should watch it. It's a good show. If y'all haven't watched it. But Dexter used to keep, keep mementos. Um, he would. The other people that he murdered. And he only murdered bad people. For the most part. He only murdered bad people. So. What he would do. Is he would. Drug them. Um, and he had like a kill room. Wrapped up in plastic. Things like that. And then he would have them laid out on the table. When they wake up. Maybe strapped down because of the I forgot what that uh, wrap it's called that plastic wrap I guess it's yeah so they'll be wrapped up in that and he will always cut their cheek so that's where I get the memento from like he keeping a souvenir so he will always cut their cheek collect a blood sample and he will store it somewhere in his house he he had like a a whole bunch of them from basically from everyone he murdered surprise motherfucker once van got arrested he, you know he confessed he he there was no way that he couldn't confess bro like you caught red hand in your hand in the cookie jar bro like you, you caught up there ain't nothing you could do about that one but the thing is he didn't just confess to that murder he confessed to all seven different murders and he led them on because he wanted the death penalty. So he tried to make a deal with the police that if he led them to each like of the seven women's grave sites that he can get the death penalty because he didn't want to spend the rest of his life in jail. So he led them literally on a tour to find the bodies. So I'm going to go in order. Of basically. Where they disappeared. Um, 
all seven women disappeared at different times. So we had Tanya Gatlin, you know, of Gary, Indiana. She was missing since January 2014. And her body was found in an abandoned building with the body of someone else named Sonia Billingsley at 413 East 43rd Avenue in Gary on October 19th. So I think from what I remember, this is the only house where there was uh, two bodies found. Um, then we had Tierra Bailey. She left to meet a friend on January 13th, 2014, but she never returned. Her family waited for her for days. No response, because of course, we know what happened. Um, but they reported her missing later that month. Her body was found in an abandoned house, uh, 1800 East 19th Avenue in Gary on October 19th. So as we see the trend, they're all being found, you know, in Gary so far. So here's another and then we found again we talk about Sonia she was reported missing February 7th 2014 her body was found in an abandoned building like I told you guys earlier with Tanya and she was 53 year old Tanya was 27 and Tierra was 28 so I think that's kind of weird that that big that's a big uh age jump for me on that one that's my like hot pockets and, and sex in here. Then you have Christine Williams, 36, of Gary, Indiana. Was a mother of four and employed at the time of her death. Her mother-in-law stated that she had not heard from Williams since February 2014. Her body was found in an abandoned building, like everyone else, on 4330 Massachusetts Street in Gary again on October 19th then you had Tracy Marty 41 also of Gary Indiana she was reported missing on June 26 2014 her body was found in an abandoned house at 2200 Massachusetts Street so it, it's kind of like now we're going in around like the same kind of areas he's it seems so he must be scouting his places before he goes, he knows they're abandoned. He knows no the one's there. He knows no, no crackheads or nothing is living there. He knows he'll be able to do what he wants to do. And then you had Anitha Jones. She was 35, also of Gary, Indiana. She was last seen alive on October 8th, 2014, and was reported missing two days later. After Van was arrested, he led police to an abandoned house at 415 East. 43rd Avenue in Gary where her body was found. I told you earlier that I was going to get into why he said that he does the things that he does. Um, there's also a confession. It's a 10 minute confession on YouTube that uh, if you guys want to look at you can look at that. Um, it was 10 minutes long. Um, I won't be real honest with y'all. I was going to put in a video until I saw it was 10 minutes long. And I was like, I'm not about to chop this up. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with y'all. So, yeah. Um, Darren Dion Van told detectives he killed way more victims in Illinois than in Northwest Indiana. That's why when I tell y'all, most of it takes place in like Chicago and stuff. Basically, all the other, some, well, some, some of the murders were in Chicago. I was also reading some place he was killing people. He killed somebody in California. Uh, I might have been New Jersey. Don't quote me on that one. Might have been New Jersey. But it was like three or four different other places that he was murdering people. And then he basically admitted some other things and it sparked new inquiry by the Chicago police and the FBI to whether he was responsible of any of the 50 unsolved strangulations of Chicago women. Their bodies were recovered in abandoned buildings 
Hmm. The MO. Empty alleyways and large trash cans. Basically from 2001 to 2018. Most on the city south and west side. So, detectives asked Van again why he killed the women. He said it relieved it, it like relieved him. It like he felt like it relieved pressure. And then he says, "Cause really, I just I'm relatively I'm crazy." Ding! I've been saying this the whole damn time. This man's fucking nuts. And when asked how he selected victims, he replied, "They are random. They're random. I, I don't plot anything. I guess he plots the location and how he's going to do things. But as far as the victim, he just so when did he just get the urge to just be like, I'm gonna kill him? Like, what made you go into that decision? Like, some days you just want to have sex, and some days you just want to kill him. Like, well, what was in the process? Uh, what's the process of elimination of that? What's, what what did you do? Did you weigh the pros and the cons? Like, what happened? Like, what did you do during this, you know, decision? Okay, so like I said, they were random, and he said he didn't want to provide details about victims in other states, fearing that it would basically um, hinder. His prosecution. So it might delay the execution in Indiana. Which he wanted. Van said he usually tried. To distance himself from his family. When he felt a killing rage. I get on a train. I get on a bus. I'd be like I know I'm losing it. I tried to be far away from my family. When I felt myself slipping. So uh, at least I mean. He cared about the family. You fucking nut. You fucking psychopath. You fucking crazy. What the hell. I mean. I get it. I guess that's cool. It's a good thing that you... But come on. What the fuck? The the random thing is, is killing me. Fuck. The whole thing is killing me. But the just I just selected them at random. Like, what the hell? Wow. Yo, wow. wow. On March age 2016, bro got some new charges. I can't even call him bro. Uh, we gonna call a nickname for this man, the the damn prowler, the creepy ass prowler. That's his name, fucking prowling ass. All right, he was charged with rape, attempted murder, criminal conduct, criminal confinement related to a separate incident that occurred with another woman he met through Backpage. He lured this woman to what was the home of his brother. You bringing your brother into this? Oh God! His brother lived there with his girlfriend and children. Once there, Van repeatedly raped the woman. At one point, she fought to get away, and he tied her up and raped her again. He kept her there for at least two hours. He then put a hooded coat over her head, gagged her, and forced her into his car. He began to drive through town, where she fought with him again. She managed to free herself from the gag and scream. A couple of bystanders heard and came to her aid. One shot his gun into the air, spooking Van, who ran away. Man, I would have shot him. Why you shoot in the air, bro? You know he being weird. You know he being a psychopath. You could, you wasn't going to jail for shooting him. You're fearing for your life. You know this man was doing whatever to this girl. She was gagged and all kinds of things. So I'm sure she was beaten and bloodied and he was raping her and doing all kinds of stuff. So I would have shot him. Why are you shooting the air, bro? Come on, do better. Van ran away on foot. It wasn't until she saw Van's arrest from a string of murders on TV that she made the connection. Some 19 months after the incident. Now, if bro would have just shot him, we would have got, we would have stopped seven other strings or however other long, because we don't even know what happened in that time period, because his, his murders and Gary were 10 months. So there's nine months uncounted for. <sighs> Man, this dude's stressing me out. Bro, we should shot him. God, we still on this. I'm on this. 
If that was me, I would have shot him. At least shot him in the knee or something. You stopped him. You didn't have to kill him. If you was that worried about going to jail, you didn't have to kill him. Shot, shoot him in the leg. Shoot him in the knee. Just don't hit an artery. Shoot him in the arm. Do something that could have stopped him. Okay. So Van pled guilty to all seven murders. On May 25th, 2018, he was sentenced to life in prison. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He really thought that he was gonna get the I I would have really thought he was gonna get the death penalty. I'm gonna be real honest, y'all. He deserved the death penalty. But I guess since he wanted that, they decided just to give him life. So that would be more torture, I guess. So salute, salute, salute. So guys got saluted. Thomas Hargrove, who found the murder accountability project, used a mathematical algorithm to determine that Van may have murdered a total of 18 women. You can figure this stuff out with math now? And the coroners agreed with him. So, hold on. Hold on. You could do this with math? You could figure out how many people somebody murdered with math? How? Please explain to me this. I need to look more into this murder accountability project because I'm intrigued. I don't even like math. I hate math. Math is the scum between my toes. It makes me vomit. I hate it. But I do it. I do decent enough. But I hate it. It's the devil. But how did you do that with math to find out this man killed 18 people? At least. This is at least. There could be more. What? And current and, and and this the crazy thing is the police, you know, they aren't investigating any additional murders, nor has he pled guilty to anything. But me, it's 18, bro. Initially, Van was charged on February 24, 2016, with battery by bodily waste after he threw a car filled with Urine and feces at a correctional officer. Alright, I'm done with this story. I'm done with this man. That's some nasty shit. That's disrespectful as hell. I I'm sorry, correctional officer. That got shit and piss in your face. Maybe some throw up. Man, I know he was hot. Oh man, I know he went to swing on him so bad. I know he did. He probably didn't, but I know he wanted to. I know he wanted to smear that shit back on him, but he couldn't because he probably lost his job. But damn, I probably blacked out. See, I, I need to stop talking about. See, I need to stop talking about him. I already done talked about him getting shot, me shooting him, me put me fighting this man. I don't even want to picture myself getting none of that shit thrown on me. So I'm done. We gonna wrap this up. Alright. Yes. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wrap it up. Like, I feel like I ranted a lot about... But he just stressed me out, bro. He, like, he like frustrated me to a point where I just didn't get it. Why are you strangling people on Backpage? They're just, they're just trying, trying to make some money, man. Let them make their money. Let them sex workers work. Let them do them thing. Am I going to pay for it? Nope. I'm good. Too much for your uh, vagina and world to pay. But who am I to judge somebody who will pay? I'm sure I got a couple homies that will pay. I ain't going to name names. But I'm sure I do. Well, again, who am I to judge them and what they want to do? If they told me, yeah, I, I pay for some. Who am I to judge? Would I do it? No. Just like I couldn't see see myself getting the only like paying for like OnlyFans and shit like that. Because it porn's free. Porn, uh, porn is free and I don't want to see somebody naked that much that I'm going to spend money to see it 
So, I mean, but again, I don't judge people. I don't judge people who do it. I, I'm, I think I got friends who do it, actually. Am I going to buy it? No. Do I care? No. You still my nigga. We still going to chill. We still going to be friends. Because I don't care about that stuff. I don't judge people on what they do to make their money. Just make your money. It's a hard not life out here. You got you to gotta make it somehow. But yep. I'm about to get out of here. Uh, I done took this into a whole different uh different little rant. Uh, see, he he got he got me off topic. I'm gonna blame it on him. I'm gonna blame it on him because he got me stressed out and he got my brain elsewhere. But yeah, we're gonna get out of here. Like, comment, subscribe to me, yeah boy. Um I think the next one I'm gonna do uh it's kinda it will be a little similar to this. A little similar in the sense that it's um it's a guy who murdered people over a span of decades. Um different towns, different cities, different places. Uh, he didn't just be at one place, one state. He didn't just focus on one area. He focused on a whole lot of areas. Bro has some issues that he he needs help with. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Like, comment, subscribe, share me to your friends. That'd be pretty cool too. Um, I like seeing the subscribers go up. Uh, I like the likes. I like the dislikes too. You know, I don't trip off dislikes. Cause that means you watching me. So keep watching me. You can dislike me if you if you want to. But watch. Just keep watching. And you can you can hate. But watch. Why you hate. So yeah, I'm done. Alright. See ya. I'm out of here.